Hey everyone, so thankful that you joined with us online today and uh, I'm really excited to celebrate uh, Jesus today with you and before we get going I just wanted to uh, read this scripture from uh, Luke 24 1 to 6 and it says this on the first day of the week very early in the morning the woman took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb they found the stone rolled away from the tomb but when they entered they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus while they were wondering about this suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them in their fright the women bowed down with their faces to the ground but the men said to them why do you look for the living among the dead and then here it is it says he is not here he is risen this is resurrection sunday and i am so excited to celebrate jesus with you today let's pray lord you are so good thank you for sending your one and only son into this world we thank you for his death and we thank you for his resurrection so that we could have new life in him so today we celebrate jesus and we will celebrate together and we are excited for who you are for what you're doing in our lives and what you're going to do through our lives in jesus name amen good morning impact life church we're so glad that you tuned in happy easter everyone please join us in worshiping the lord this morning
crowned with glory now the savior knelt to wash our feet and now at his feet we bow the one who wore our sin and shame now robed in majesty of perfect love now shines for all to see and your name your name is victory oh praise will rise to Christ our King your name your name victory all praise will rise to Christ our
Happy Resurrection Sunday to you. So glad that you joined us on this special occasion where we celebrate the victory over death of our King, our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'm sure you woke up excited about just the day that we celebrate everything the Lord has done for us. And we're so glad that you tuned in with us today to hear the good news, to hear the gospel of Jesus and all that he's accomplished. So this morning, let's get into the word of God. We are excited to hear what God is going to speak to us today. How many know that God, again, is always ready to go? He's always turned on. So his word is working in your and my life this very day. And so this morning, I'm excited just to talk to you about the gospel. So whether you've, you've intentionally joined us or you accidentally clicked on, you know, somebody may have shared this post and you find yourself listening to this, we are so glad and thrilled that you come to join us this morning as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So if you got your Bibles or if you don't, Hey, just, you know what, I would encourage you to find one. You need to look at some of these verses that we're going to go through today and really find out what the Spirit of God wants to do in your life today. I know it's powerful. I know it's good because He's always good. So in your Bibles, I want you to turn to Romans chapter 1 for a moment. And we're going to look at verses 16 and 17. And this morning, like I said, I want to just talk to you about the gospel, which is the good news. And in verse 16, it says this. It says, I refuse to be ashamed of of the wonderful message of God's liberating power unleashed in us through Christ. For I am thrilled to preach that everyone who believes is saved, the Jew first and then people everywhere. Verse 17, this gospel unveils a continual revelation of God's righteousness, a perfect righteousness given to us when we believe. Right, And it moves us from receiving life through faith to the power of living by faith. That is why the scriptures means when it says, we are right with God through life-giving faith. This morning, I want to ask this question, what is the gospel? What is it and what it's not? You know, again, when you hear the word gospel, the little Greek, when you, what it brings out is that it's jumping up and down, excited, good news. And that's what Jesus came to bring. He came to bring us good news. And I want to emphasize good news, not just good advice. And so, you know, one thing about understanding when you want to learn what something is, you can find out what it's not. And I want to just lay out a couple of ideas and a couple of thoughts to you this morning. Again, this being the good news, not just good advice. Because what is good news? News is simply what has already been done. And advice would be something that what you should be doing or what you need to be doing. God didn't come to give you good advice. He came to bring you and I good news. And this is what we celebrate today, the good news of what Jesus has already done. So let me just start off this morning by saying this, that the gospel is not just a code of ethics to be debated. The gospel is not an opinion. The gospel message isn't this, explaining if you do enough, you can please God. The gospel isn't a message explaining how to make life better. The gospel isn't a message that God will someday do something for us. The gospel isn't a message that God will help us out, you know, once in a while in messes that we may find ourselves in. 
The gospel isn't a message that God will one day deliver us and free us. The gospel is a message proclaiming what God has already done for us. It is a completely finished work. And all that is required of you and I now is to believe it and act like it's true. This is wonderful just to start it off this morning is that this is good news and the good news, the gospel message that we proclaim is again, like I just want to reiterate that again. It's not you and I trying to get something from God. It's not waiting for God to do something on our behalf. We're not waiting on God to do something to benefit or bless us. The finished work, the gospel message that we proclaim is the good news of what Jesus has already done. So this morning we can boldly proclaim that what is a finished work, what Jesus did on the cross is a finished work, meaning this, everything that we'll ever need in this life, spiritually, in our soul, in our mental realm, and in our physical bodies, it's already been accomplished through the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Again, we've said this numerous times, but I want to reiterate it, that the, the gospel that we're proclaiming, where Christian life is not about trying to get something from God, it's now learning to release what He already gave us. So this morning, I just want to remind you that where you're sitting or wherever you're standing and listening to this this morning, is that this good news that we proclaim, this good news that Jesus Jesus came to bring us it is a finished work it is complete it's been sealed in the blood of Jesus and now Jesus right now is making sure that what he did in his death what he did in his burial and in his resurrection he is making sure that it is manifested or experienced in and your and my life the gospel is God bringing lost humanity back to its original purpose and that's what this thing that we're all about. We celebrate this. We have come back now into the purposes that God had for us since when the fall happened back in Genesis chapter 3. Now, what is the purpose that God had for humanity? What did he want to do with humanity? He wanted a close-knit relationship. That's what this whole relation, this whole gospel we preach is all founded and based on God's intimate love he had for us. He wanted a relationship with us. And why did he want relationship with us? I want to just give you two points as we launch into this. Number one is this. Why did he want to be close with you? Number one is this, is to be a billboard of the infinite riches of his grace. God wanted to use you to show off through Woo! That's what he wanted to do. And look at this verse in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 7. In the Amplified Bible, it says that God did all this. And if you read Ephesians chapter 2, 1 through 6, you find out that even though we were dead and you know lost in our own sin, obeying the commander-in-chief of this evil world, even though we were lost in all that, God is so rich in mercy because he loved you and I so much, he had to do something about that. So what did he do? He gave us Christ. He gave us the very life of Christ that when we accepted him, he raised us up with him and caused us to sit with him in heaven heavenly places. Now it says, he did all of this that he might clearly demonstrate through the ages to come the immeasurable, come on say with me, the immeasurable, the limitless, and the surpassing riches of his grace, his free grace, in his kindness and goodness of heart toward us in Christ Jesus. Why did God do what he did? Because again, we want he wanted relationship. Why does he want close relationship with us? So that he could demonstrate through all the ages and time that is yet to come. He wants to show off on you and I, saying, look how much I love my kids. Look how much I take care of my family. That's what he wants to use you and I for. Man, that's powerful. Right? And then secondly, again, to be his under rulers on this earth that would take the culture of heaven, which is the blessing of heaven and to establish it here on planet earth. So I want to just again remind you, what are we talking about is that we are discussing why did God do everything that he did? He wanted close relationship. This is what all of this is founded on, a close intimate relationship. And why did he want us close? To show off the riches of his grace through us and also that you and I continue to be his under rulers and actually bringing the culture of heaven to this planet and to our sphere of influence that we're in now. And you can see that in Genesis chapter 1, 26 through 28, God actually he says that he made us in his image, in his likeness. So we have the exact image and nature of God. And he's told you and I, I'm going to read this to you in verse 28. The first words that man heard were, be fruitful. 
multiply, fill the earth and govern it. He says, reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. Right? It says, God bless them. And basically, he said, here's planet earth. Now, I want you, out of our relationship, I want you to take the culture, to take the atmosphere of heaven, and I want you to subdue the entire earth, to govern the entire earth with heaven itself. So you and I were given a Genesis mandate to now bring across the entire planet. And listen, that was the very beginning. That's what God wanted to do from the very start. Now, as I just read those things, it's exciting, it's good. And you know, in order for there to be good news, there means there had to have been some bad news. And so before I jump into the excitement of all this is I also just want to remind you and I the bad news that something happened after man heard these words. You know, Adam and Eve, they heard these words to govern the earth, to subdue it, to multiply, to fill it and bring heaven into this planet. Something happened. And you can see that in Genesis chapter 3. And I want you to turn there in your Bible. And I have uh, my New Living Translation here. But in Genesis chapter 3 verse 1, it says, The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord had made. And one day he asked the woman, did, you, did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? Of course we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, the woman replied. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. God said you must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you'll die. Verse 4, you won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it, and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. The woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful, and its fruit looked delicious, and she wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it too. And verse 7, I want you to see those, those three words right there. It says, at that moment. At that moment, their eyes were both open and they suddenly felt shame in their nakedness. So they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves up. And then, of course, you continue to read on it like it, God comes down in the cool of the day. And all of a sudden he calls out, Adam, where are you? And at that moment, there was separation. So what happened from you know Genesis 1 through Genesis chapter 3? It was all great. And then Genesis 3 took place. And at that moment... Adam and Eve, because of their disobedience to what God had asked and commanded, they were born again from now in a reverse cycle. So rather than being born again, what would we know from death to life, they went from life to death. And the human race at that moment was separated from the creator, was separated from the very source of life himself. And the thing that you have to understand this is, is that separated from God means that I'm separated from everything he is and everything he has. For example, God is the source and he is life. He is love. He is peace. He is joy. He is health. He is abundance or prosperity. He is wisdom itself. Now, I've been separated from him, or Adam and Eve at that time, mankind was separated. That means I have no access to any of these things. So now instead, now that I've been separated because of Adam and Eve, their disobedience to God, they separated themselves from God. And now not only are they separated from him, now they are connected to something else. And we know this to be true, that the human race was now connected to Satan and the kingdom of darkness. So everything that Satan is, everything that he has, everything connected to the kingdom of darkness was now part of who we were from the inside out. So like we just gave those lists of who God was, now let me just give you a list of what we were connected to. We were connected to and had on the inside of us death, hate, anxiety, depression, sickness, poverty, ignorance, and this death, it spread to everyone simply because man had disobeyed God. And you know what? I want you to go look here for a moment in Romans chapter 5 and verse 12 in the Passion Bible, talking about how death spread. It continued to spread. And in verse 12, it says, When Adam sinned, the entire world was affected. Sin entered. So I want you to see this, that sin wasn't there in the Garden of Eden. 
right? It had no access. It couldn't get in. But sin needed an access point. It needed a door. And sadly, that's when Adam and Eve, they opened the door for sin to get in. It says sin entered human experience. It entered human experience and death was the result. And so death followed this sin, casting its shadow over all humanity because all have sinned. So again, I want to reiterate, sin entered the world through Adam. Sin on the wings of sin brought death and death spread to everyone. Now, what kind of death spread to everyone? The most horrific type of death there is, is spiritual death. Spiritual death simply means this, that I am separated from God entirely. What kind of death did Adam and Eve experience? Absolutely, they experienced spiritual death at that moment. They were spiritually separated from the life giver and the life source himself. So they experienced death spiritually. They experienced death mentally, emotionally in their soul. And then, you know, it took a couple hundred years to kill Adam, but eventually he experienced physical death. Did you know that was never God's intention for mankind to know and experience and go through death? Man, if you really think about it, if you go back and read Genesis chapter 1, that was never in the plan of God, never in the mind of God. Yet we are so used to just death, things dying and people dying. I mean, if you really think of it again from a natural standpoint, when somebody dies, a lot of times, I'll just say from a natural, people don't know how to handle it. You and I, were not designed to, to manage or be carriers of grief. We don't know what to do with it. And that's why you find a lot of depression. And that's all comes from death. And so this is what happened when sin entered the world. So what sin kept us enslaved to spiritual death, which is eternal separation from God. So here we are in this state, completely stuck in our sin dead lives. You know, in Romans 3, 23, it says this, that everyone has sinned and we all, all human beings have fallen short of the glory of God or God's glorious standard. So like I said, here we were, we were stuck Uh, Stuck in sin, leading us down a path to eternal destruction. And this is basically, (laughs) at that point, aren't you glad that your Bible doesn't stop at Genesis chapter 3? Where all of a sudden you hear at that moment, when they realize there was a separation, aren't you glad that it doesn't stop there? That our God had a plan from before the foundation of the world, knowing this, that mankind would fall into this sin, would disobey and would leave God. But aren't you thankful that God didn't stop there? that he came after us strongly. And this is what we want to talk about today. So what did God do? God sent us a hero and his name is Jesus Christ. That's who he is. He is our hero. And what did our hero do? I want to give you just three things this morning for you to celebrate and rejoice over. Number one, a hero that died in my place. Remember, I want you just to think of all the bad news. And maybe you're watching and maybe you've never heard the gospel. Maybe you never heard about this Jesus, never heard about what he did. We're so glad that you're here. And maybe you are a Christian and you're listening to this. I want to remind you again and of this marvelous salvation that cost God tremendous amount. It cost him his only dear son. And we know that in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only unique son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. This is the gospel. The gospel is wrapped up in the nutshell of that one verse that God motivated, compelled by love. He didn't just stand by and go, hey, you left me? Well, good riddance. Good luck to the rest of you then. Hope you figure it out and we'll enjoy eternal death. I'm so glad he didn't do that. I'm so glad he didn't stay away. Instead, motivated and moved by love, God came after us. And like I said, he gave us a hero and his name is Jesus. And this hero, he died in my place. He took the condition of what Adam and Eve, that when they went from life to death, Jesus came and he died in my place. Look at some of these verses here. Romans chapter 5 and verse 6, it says, For when the time was right, the anointed one came and died to demonstrate his love for sinners who were entirely helpless, weak, and powerless to save themselves. He died with my spiritual, emotional, and physical condition. He took it on. 
Look at this verse in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21. If you want to just jot these down, I encourage you so you can spend some time thinking on them a little later. But it says this in the word that for God made the only one who did not know sin to become sin for us. Can we just say that one more time? God made the only one, Jesus, uh, who did not sin. How many know that Jesus went on this earth? He lived a perfect life, right? Flawless, without sin, without guilt. Yet, what did God do? God made him who did not sin to become sin for who? For us. Jesus didn't die for himself. He died for us. He died for you. So he took on the condition that I was in, spiritually, emotionally, physically. He took that upon himself so that we might become the righteousness of God through our union with him. So what does that mean? Okay, so when you see Jesus hanging on that cross, what was Jesus doing? What was that representing? Everything that you see, I mean, talk about Jesus going to the whipping post, talking about Jesus getting beat, getting pulped. I mean, from the natural, it just looks like that's, that's a horrible beating. But I want you to remind you again that Jesus did that voluntarily. He did that. He said, I lay down my life for the sheep. It was something that God had planned from a long time ago to do this to his son, Jesus. And while those beatings were taking place on him, the Bible actually tells us that while from the natural we just see a harsh punishment we see an absolute cruel beating that took place yet every time that whip went into Jesus's back it was actually sickness and disease from the spiritual side that God was throwing on his son Jesus he was getting beat with all of it all of the sin all the shame all the condemnation all the emotional torment all the anxiety all that I mean any kind of medical condition in the soul realm in the physical realm was being laid upon his son Jesus Jesus. And the Bible, that's what it tells us this, is that he took on this sin. He took it all upon himself. Why? So that I could be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Jesus was my substitute hanging on that cross with my condition spiritually, my condition in my soul, my condition in my physical body, so that I could be made on the inside spiritually righteous, meaning this, I can stand before God as if I've never done a thing wrong. And how did you get that? You were made that way simply by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. This is what our hero did. Our hero died in my place and he reversed the curse for me. What else did our hero do? Our hero, also, he through his sacrifice, he erased my death sentence condition. Now I want you to go flip here with me for a moment. Colossians chapter 2. This is what my hero did. He canceled some things for me. Colossians chapter 2 verse 13 through 15. The Bible tells us this, that the realm of death it describes our former state, like we just what we just talked about. For we were held in sin's grasp. I want you to get the picture of this. We were held in its grasp. But now we've been resurrected out of that realm of death, never to return. Uh, for we are forever alive and forgiven of all our sin. Now listen to this, verse 14. Jesus canceled out every legal violation we had on our record and the old arrest warrant that stood to indict us. He erased it all, our sins, our stained soul. He deleted it all and they cannot be retrieved. Everything we once were in Adam has been placed onto his cross and nailed permanently there as a public display of cancellation. Thank you, Lord. Verse 15, it says, Then Jesus made a public spectacle of all the powers and principalities of darkness, stripping away from them every weapon and all their spiritual authority and power to accuse us. And by the power of the cross, Jesus led them around as prisoners in a procession of triumph. He was not their prisoner. They were his. What did Jesus do? Jesus canceled 
everything that was written against us. Basically, just kind of picture it like this. There was a ticket for every little sin that she did. The devil had records of that. He did this or she did that. They said this. They acted like this. They had this in their heart. They did this. This was their action. And boom, boom, boom. I mean, the devil's called the accuser of the brethren. That's what he does. He just accuses it. There's a line upon line about every little mistake. And so what God did through Jesus Christ is he took all of those things that were written against us and he nailed his son Jesus to that cross, meaning everything that was on there, everything that was written against us, he killed his son Jesus with it and there Jesus died with those conditions so that you and I can be free. And when Jesus rose from the dead, it says that every one of those things completely wiped clean because the, uh, the, the price that Jesus paid, his blood, had completely washed those things away. And now you and I can walk away completely free. The condition of death is gone forever because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. Thank you, Lord. Isn't that good news? This is the gospel. Again, the gospel is not something that one day God will do something. It's the gospel is what God has already done for us. So right now, you are free. Come on, say that with me. I am free. I am free from sin. I am free from guilt. I am free from condemnation. Why? Because Jesus paid the ultimate price. Man, God is good. And lastly, I want you to receive this, is that a hero that displayed, or sorry, a hero that destroyed the tormenting dread now of death. In Hebrews chapter 2, 14 through 15, it says this, Since all of his children, talking about you and I, have flesh and blood, so Jesus became human to fully identify with us. He did this so that he could experience death and annihilate the effects of the intimidating accuser who holds against us the power of death. By embracing death, Jesus sets free those who live their entire lives in bondage to the tormenting dread of death. What did Jesus just do? He got rid of the sting of death. Man, that's good news. The grave didn't hold him. The grave couldn't handle him. Therefore, the grave can't handle us either. Why? Because the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells inside of these and he will resurrect it. Even if you have lost ones or ones that have, have died and went home to be with the Lord, they're not lost. They're not, you know, somewhere floating around. They're with him one day to come back, pick up these new brand new bodies and forever to be raised with God. This is good news for us. The, the, the Bible even talks about, oh, death, where is your, your sting? We are completely free. We are completely whole because of what Jesus has done in his death, burial, and resurrection. So what is the gospel? The gospel is a wonderful God, full of love, was unwilling to spend eternity without us so that he paid the price for all sin. He paid the price for all sin. Did you know that people do not go to hell for sin? They don't go to hell for, you know, stealing um, committing adultery, alcoholics, you know, you, you name it. Any kind of thing that we would know naturally is a sin. People don't go to hell for that. Jesus took care of the sin issue. So why is it then that people choose to go that way, choose to go to hell? Is because this, they have, they have not accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. That is the sin that people commit. What do you do with this man, Jesus, as we talked about our hero who paid the ultimate price to rescue us, to deliver us, to free us? What do you do with this man, Jesus? Because listen, if you're watching this morning and you're thinking about all the problems and the things that you've done, I want to tell you the good news is this, is that Jesus has already taken care of this sin issue. Your past, by simply acknowledging and believing in your heart, confessing with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and you believe that the punishment that he paid, the price that he paid with his life and with his blood, and he rose again from the dead to, to set us free, if you believe that, all of those sins, all of those things, those past mistakes, the Bible says is forever wiped away, never to be brought up again because God sees you in Christ. Therefore, he sees you without any fault. This is the good news of the gospel. So I want to encourage you. Now we're going to get an opportunity after this short video for you to receive the Lord this morning because there is no better time than today to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. It's the most powerful thing. Let me get back into this. So what is the gospel? The gospel is, is about a wonderful God, 
an amazing father full of love and he gave his us his righteous stand nature to experience his life we have an amazing and wonderful god full of love who destroyed the power of sin and broke the power of the devil over my life he absolutely has no power he's got no say that says the bible has that the enemy has zero authority whatsoever none at all that Jesus said, I have been given, I've taken back the keys, I've taken back authority. That means the devil's got nothing. So I want to encourage you right now, there's nothing that's holding you back from experiencing total freedom, spirit, soul, body, because of what Jesus has done. If he's got it all, that means the devil's got nothing. So you and I have to take the victory, take the, now the authority that Jesus has given to us, and we rise up, stand strong, stand tall, because your hero, a resurrected man named Jesus Christ, has won the battle for you and I. So we ought not be sick, we ought not be depressed, we ought not just lay down and quit we ain't going to stop we ain't going to back down we continue to advance and push the kingdom of god forward again because this is what you're a part of is you're part of an army it's a beautiful army it's made up of family and together we rise up and we go forward so now that's what the gospel is all to, all about so today i am completely his can you say this with me say this with me today i am completely his i'm completely free I'm completely forgiven, and I'm completely righteous in his eyes <laughs> because of what Jesus has done. Now, I'm no longer stuck. I'm no longer trapped. I'm no longer lost. I'm no longer an orphan, and I'm no longer an outsider. I belong to a family, the family of God. You belong there, and hey, you're part of this wonderful family that God had always wanted from the very beginning of time. And because if you simply accept Jesus Christ, you'd be part of that family. We'll see you in one sec. No other king could vanquish the war horse or silence the warrior's rage while riding the lowly back of a donkey. No other king could break the dominion of darkness, the tyranny of evil, with a reign of grace and a kingdom of peace. No other king could give his life for the redemption of rebels, his wealth to welcome the outcast. Jesus is that king, the king of glory, son of the living God. Not just another king, not just another prophet, not just another teacher. He was the one the world had been waiting for. The one to deliver us from captivity, the son of David and Abraham's chosen seed. He is the goal of the Mosaic law, Yahweh in the flesh. He is the one to establish God's reign and rule, to heal the sick, give sight to the blind, freedom to the prisoners, and proclaim good news to the poor. This Jesus was the creator come to earth and the beginning of a new creation. He embodied the covenant, fulfilled the commandments, and reversed the curse. This Jesus is the Christ that God spoke of to the serpent, the one prefigured to Noah in the flood, the one promised to Abraham, the one guaranteed to Moses before he died, the one promised to David during his reign, the one revealed to Isaiah as a suffering servant, the one predicted through the prophets and prepared for through John the Baptist. He is the Father's Son, Savior of the world, and substitute for our sins. More loving, more holy, and more wonderfully terrifying than we ever thought possible. He is our Jesus, and there is no other king like him. He is our God, our glory, our victorious Savior. There is no other king like him. There is no other king. Isn't that such a powerful video? 
Thanks again so much for joining with us this morning. And I want to just take this opportunity. You know what? If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior, I want to give you that opportunity to this morning. You know, the Bible tells us that there is no better day. Today is the day of salvation. So if you have maybe have been walking away from the Lord, if you decided to kind of do your own thing, now it's time for you to come home. Listen, Jesus is coming back very quickly. And if you're, if maybe you've walked away from the Lord, or maybe you have at some point just kind of said, I don't really know anything about this church. I haven't heard anything about Jesus. I don't know much about it. Well, you just heard the gospel preached to you today, kind of in a nutshell. But this wonderful Father that we call God, this amazing King named Jesus that we serve, He loves you, He's for you, and He's inviting you to come home this morning. So with, if that's you watching today, I want you to say and repeat this prayer after me, and I, we'll go from there. So just say this, Father God, I come to you in Jesus' name. I believe with all my heart that Jesus, you died and you rose again for me. I thank you for your blood. I thank you for your forgiveness. I receive your sacrifice today, and I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord over my life. I believe it in my heart that I'm rescued. And today, April the 4th, 2021, my life is forever yours. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Now, if you just prayed that, if that was the first time, or hey, you rededicated saying, I'm coming back to the Lord, we want to hear from you. Let us know. We want to get some materials in your hand. We want to connect with you. Because listen, maybe you're wherever you're watching this, but you always have a family here at Impact Life Church. You do belong here. So please make sure you reach out to us, impactlife.ca. You can send us an email through there. Or if, hey, if you want to give us a call, 403-340-3880. And we love to connect with you. God bless you. Have a wonderful uh, day. Enjoying Resurrection Sunday. And we'll see you soon. Thanks for joining with us again today. Um, just before you go, I just wanted to mention a couple of things. And the first one is, is this. If you made a decision today to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life, then we want to know about it. And so if you wouldn't mind going to impactlife.ca and under the I'm new, there's a connect card. And we would love for you to fill out that connect card. And, uh, and then that way we know that you have made a decision to follow Jesus. And then we would love to stay connected with you in that. Also, if you've been connecting with us online, but maybe you haven't filled out a connect card, you can do the same thing as well. Just go to, uh, again, impactlife.ca under the I'm new, there's the connect card and you can fill that out. And what that allows us to do is to get you information on what's going on here at Impact Life Church, but it also allows us to give you Pastor Joel's sermon notes, and those are always super encouraging to go over even throughout the week. So we just want to let you know that we are so thankful that you can continue to connect with us, and we're just gonna, we're trusting that you are gonna have a fantastic week, and we just want you to know before we check out here that you belong here. <laughs>